Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's CC Webinar Live keynote and panel discussion session. And thank you for joining. We would also like to thank Telefonica team for sponsoring today's CC Webinar Live session. Now I would like to pass on the microphone to Eric to introduce the keynote speakers and today's panelists and later on to moderate the panel. For audience, if you have any questions, please do use the chat box option throughout the session. That's all from my side. Eric, over to you. Thank you very much, Laura, and welcome, everybody. Um, so I'm delighted on behalf of the Kerry community to have keynote speaker Jose and panelists uh, Serve, Michael and Edwin uh, uh, with me here today. And uh, today we're going to discuss actually about the telecom wholesale industry in the digital transformation era. Mouthful. Um, we will start with a session of a keynote presentation from uh, from Jose from uh, Telefonica uh, Global Solutions. And uh, afterwards, we're going to bridge this into a panel discussion as you're used to. Now, a quick word to, to Telefonica Global um, Solutions. Um, it manages the international wholesale global roaming and multinational businesses of the Telefonica Group, along with the USA businesses. It delivers world-class services and platforms to multinational companies, wholesale carriers, fixed and mobile operators, OTTs, service providers, and aggregators, helping them in the digital transformation. Um, Telefonica Global Solutions offering a global footprint with particularly strong presence in Europe and Latin America. It provides customers uh, with innovative and global solutions wherever they are, including voice and UCC, networking global messaging, satellite, roaming, cloud security, and IoT and big data. So um, thank you very much, Telefonica Global Solutions. So let's go over to, um, to, to the people who are joining me here in this, uh, this webinar live session. Um, so um, a quick word, um, Jose, welcome. Hi, thank you very much, Eric. Please so give, give a quick introduction, thank you. Yeah, my, my name is Jose de Arte, I'm sitting in, in Amsterdam and I lead the IT architecture and digital push in Telefonica Global Solutions. Okay, thank you very much. Michael, welcome. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, Michael Kearns is my name. I'm uh, co Chief Strategy Officer and Co-Founder at Amartis. Uh, we're a company specializing in network automation or supporting our global customer base through in their digital transformation through network orchestration and automation for both inter and, and intra provider automation solutions. Thank you and good having you, uh, Michael. So over to, to Serve. Hey, uh, good day, everybody. I'm the deputy director of CPC Telecom, CPC, uh, Citic Telecom, CPC in Europe. Um, in the carrier market, we help our carrier customer with connectivity, public and private, SD-WAN and cloud to operate in line with local legislation and overcoming cultural and language barriers in Greater China, APEC, Russia, CIS, former Soviet Union, and Eastern Europe. Thank you very much, uh, Serve. And Jose, Michael, and Serve, good having you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have another panelist, which we pre recorded because he's actually flying high. So uh, let's see what he has to say to us. So now, um, last but not least, we go to the Flying Dutchman. Edwin, welcome to the, to the panel session. Thank you, Eric. So it's an honor to uh, to be part of this session as well. Uh, unfortunately, not live, but uh, pre-recorded uh, from the Netherlands. And um, let me first introduce myself uh, a little bit so that you know my background. Uh, my name is Edwin van Eerland. Uh, I've been in the industry for uh, a significant amount of time. I'm currently uh, holding the position of uh, CCO and COO in the company iBasis. As you all know, iBasis was founded 25 years ago as a traditional voice over IP carrier. But currently, we are doing significantly more. Um, not only, let's say, voice termination uh, worldwide, uh, including fraud solutions, but also we deliver mobile services to the MNOs. Uh, we deliver SMS services and SMS firewall solutions. Uh, IoT as a um, new technology is uh, also on our radar screen and important enough. And that's also my connection for the story today. Um, the presence of cloud communications as such uh, to tap in and to connect the old and the new world together. So that's in short my introduction. And uh, thank you, Eric, for, um, for giving me this opportunity to participate in this session. 
Well, you're, you're most welcome, Edwin, and honor having you. And and again, uh, congrats with uh, with 25th uh, anniversary of uh, of iBase. So uh, so thank you very much for uh, for joining. So okay, ladies and gentlemen. So all the panelists are are known to you, and um, I'm uh, happy and uh, and delighted to 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 invite Jose for his uh, keynote presentation and uh, whatever uh, telecom uh, sorry Telefonica Global Solution has to, uh, to to offer and to share with us. So, Jose, over to you. Okay, thank you, Eric. So, uh, I would like to uh, comment on the digitalization of the industry. Uh, talking about the data culture as a uh, competitive advantage in, in, in our industry. To, to, to introduce uh, Telefonica, uh, you, you might know that the group is uh, multinational. It's, we have, we're based in, in Spain, 360 million customers, 43 billion euros revenues, 100,000 employees in an, all the footprint and operating in 13 countries uh, with big uh, local businesses. In Telefonica Global Solutions is the international branch of, of the Telefonica Group. We operate uh, different services all across the, the countries and linking together our operational businesses and enlarging their footprint into different countries. Um, Telefonica Global Solutions uh, has uh, global customers, agreement with uh, suppliers, roamers, um, different circuit vendors. We have uh, global IP. Network with, network with more than 100 pops. Uh, we also um, do a vo wholesale voice and, and in, in the million, million of minutes. The portfolio is, is big. You will have the, the video on the website for reference, but we have services in the satellite arena, roaming, messaging, cloud, security, networking, and, and voice, IoT, or, or our footprint. The, the, the thing with that they are made of the of, of digital and, and they are made of, of data. So the, the information is what leads our present uh, moment in industry. It comes uh, structured and presented in many different ways, in schemas, in, in formats, but data at the end is what fuels the, the business and the businesses uh, that we, we serve. And, and then proper data information management uh, makes or breaks the, the processes and for us, it's very important to have an efficient handling of, of the data flows coming in and from the company. I'm not taking, talking here about the data plane of the services we, 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 we serve, but the, the control plane on, on the, that surround the business. And also, I'm not meaning uh, abilities to manage Excel or, or big data. Our, uh, sorry, our, our revolution actually the, in the industry, we are uh, fueled by by data information as, as compared with other times in which there were all the tools that were liberating power or electricity or mass producing. Now we are in the in the era of, of data. And for that we know that the, the the interface is also part of the product. And in the relationship with our companies and with our customers, we also need to connect not only at the level of the services we provide, but also in how we do business, how we do the, the business support uh, functions, what we identify and call the, the business data flows and, and interactions. And it's in, in those interactions in, with the business in which we can uh, have a competitive advantage and, uh, and, and becomes part of what the industry is talking about, the digital transformation. It's the, the new uh, business interface, the, the API basically, and it's not the, the web base in the in the B two B B two C market, but the B two B, and it helps if we visualize our companies as digital twins, the digital model of our companies, the inflows and outflows of information, information data, uh, billing procedures, um, uh, the Salesforce, the CRM, all the interactions with with customers and, and providers. And then analyzing these flows of information and the, and the choke points is where we can give advantage to a company by making these points and, and strengthening them. In, in our world, we know that with various networks and, and products coming from different silos or technology towers. So we have to live with diversity and make diversity as an asset, maybe be flexible on, on, on this uh, reality. And since products, Nowadays, tend to substitute protocols. 
and, and standards are really slowing, slowing uh, coming up. We need to increase our ability to deal with this um, diversity and flows of data. And the best way we find to do it is by empowering all the employees and make the data culture and data skills um, an asset for all the company in all the groups, all the areas from finance to human resources, to marketing, to sales, to operations, to technology groups, and to, to everybody. And that's, that's a change for, for every, every employee. Because at the end, it goes back to the, to the people. So I wanted to share with you our experience in the, in the last years and, and going up for, uh, for the next ones in the, in the big opportunity that is that enabling uh, all our employees and teams with uh, platforms in which they can learn and develop solutions for their own uh, problems and not all the time bringing uh, outside support or outside consultants, but also enabling our, our employees and making them responsible on, on the cases that they, they solve themselves. We find, and I'm talking by the, from the IT side, that the end up solutions we provide, they reach up to some point of flexibility, but this diversity I mentioned before requires a much more uh, flexible set of tools. And for that, we have to provide platforms in which uh, different groups and employees can develop their own solutions, give them uh, training so they can do uh, prototypes, experience, gain, gain knowledge. Because in, in this way, we unleash the real power of the, of the tools. And once the, the proper data manipulation and information manipulation culture permeates the organization and everybody knows how important it is to handle data properly, then is when the whole organization can uh, react better to what our, our customers are, are asking and demanding. Because we find that data and digital is a mindset to be shared with everybody in the, in the, in the company. From, it's, a, it's a very personal thing. And this, this personal transformation, which is from the company point of view, what you see at the external products and services we offer, but it's also, it also affects how the, the services are conceptualized at the beginning, how the offering is um, conceptualized, how the people face the, the customer problems in all the customer touch points uh, with us. So we, we are encouraging and practicing uh, with low-code tools. Uh, with, uh, some years ago, Python as the, the language, do, the common language between all the areas to uh, make prototypes and, and make uh, quick solutions uh, to be able to test uh, them cheaply. Uh, we have put in the hands of, of our internal users and now is, is getting uh, results into a customer's uh, API gateway and, and uh, user created um, RPAs to automize uh, internal pr processes, sharing the strong data culture from the da data management book as, as guidelines to keep uh, proper uh, hygienic treatment of all the information and data coming into the company, addresses, um, phone numbers, formats, names, uh, codes, um, country codes, everything is to be uh, properly shared among all the diverse uh, environments and, and practices. And then the, the last but not least is to embrace some practices from the software folk, from the business that is developing software. And one of the practices that we find very interesting is the, the, the DevOps practices, which with not only small teams, but filling up the, the circle of continuous development and continuous deployment with our map of tools we can and we are doing some uh, application of internal processes products also to the customers and, and reach out and amplify the touch points with customers and providers and this we find provides a competitive advantage on top of the products we we provide so the, to share some cases that we can uh, elaborate after in the panel or or in different moment um, is something as across the company and, and empowering the, the people we call digital way to this uh, internal movement. So from vendor management, they are reaching out in all the agreements with our providers to have um, API interfaces for, thing, for uh, invoicing, for um, buying new products. The CLI and the well, CLI loving and engineers, uh, they have... Uh, Develop skills in, in DevNet with the Cisco campaigns and the Juniper campaigns. 
to be pro, um, proficient in, in modeling uh, configurations using YAML and YANG and different tools. So they move away from the CLI and, and they conceptualize the networks in, in different ways. Marketing teams have also jumped into the data lake to process prices and do tools to do the, the pricing uh, better with um, analyzing the lost and, and one bits and enabling customer retention. The handling and, and delivery uh, teams um, are using a lot of RPAs. That's a surprising amount of um, embracing with um, a big passion, and they're saving thousands of hours and minimizing errors in that. The product development teams are using Jira and, and very agile practices uh, to, to build new products. And also, the, for example, the defender processing was dealing and, and partnering with uh, some Amazon product managers or the Chinese teams of the Techstrack product. So that's um, for, for us, it's a very good way to put some individuals that were uh, maybe not in so close contact with um, modern or late uh, market trends, and they are in the edge now of what the industry can, can offer. Because the industry at the end, our industry is also moving in this direction. We have standards like the MEF and TM Forum on the APIs. We have them for the, for the last years, and it's an ongoing effort, uh, clearly in this direction. There is a, a market on the API first approach to market some articles, some articles in the, the current community uh, website and, and magazines and so on. And this also will unleash the, the, the position of our companies in the lean digital supply chain, allowing to connect and to be the, the Toyota, digital Toyota likes of the, of the time of the, of the car manufacturing. So to recap and, and summarize my exposition, well, goes mentioning that the, since digital is built on data, uh, we need to talk data, not only bits with our customers and suppliers. This is something that goes across the company. Everybody in the company needs to be part of the wave, part of the solution, developing data skills. API and data-driven uh, can have a competitive advantage, connecting with our customers and providers better. And that requires an automation to give the people the right incentives because they develop themselves, they, they learn new skills, they uh, become competitive. And that's the... Um, context on, on how we can provide more value to, to customers and industry and, and, and be relevant and play with others that uh, are offering services that could substitute uh, us and ours. And that's it. Thank you very much. So we can introduce the panel. Thank you so much, uh, Jose. Let's uh, let's quickly have a have a, have a look at the at the chat box with uh, if people yep. have uh, any questions coming in. No, but you know everybody out there, you do have the possibility to go into the chat box to uh, to ask some questions to uh, to the valuable uh, panelists we we have all here. So uh, please do so and, and keep those questions coming. Thank you. Um, so Jose, um, thank you so much for 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 your. Um, uh, for, for your keynote presentation and thank you for sharing this information uh, how you see it how Tele telefonica global solutions uh, sees it and, and and how you act and and, and you know to to to, to bring some uh, so some more customer value to uh, to to your end customers actually so that that's uh, that's very nice um so yes uh serve michael um, please join the, the 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 panel discussion and ladies and gentlemen i um uh, with edwin who is uh, as i mentioned already uh, before he is uh, flying in the sky currently but we pre-recorded already and uh, and i would like to uh, to 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 see what um, uh, on the first question what he uh, what he has to say to us so it's uh, let's see what edwin uh, wants to share with us okay um so edwin um quickly over to you um from your point of view um what are the new uh, opportunities and challenges in the digital area for the for the market players and what big ticket items do we see What's out there? No, I, th I think there's a lot out there. And um, unfortunately, uh, COVID was a, signif a significant driver in that uh, acceleration of the digital transformation. Uh, uh, what happened over there is that uh, new products uh, and new markets and new segments became visible. And the sleeping giants, as, as, 
yeah, that's the way I call them, the traditional telcos, had difficulties to adjust to that uh, new pace. And that's also where the old world and the new world came together. Um, and with the old world, I mean, indeed, worldwide false voice termination, uh, quality of service, and the knowledge of local regulation uh, is extremely important uh, to give the quality uh, what enterprise markets, but also super small, medium enterprise is, is needing uh, for their client base. Um, bringing the old and the new world together was a big challenge and is still a big challenge. Uh, uh, you see that um, uh, what is needed, uh, for instance, to, to facilitate a Microsoft Teams call and a direct routing facility, uh, that's not an easy thing. Uh, you need local uh, numbers, you need uh, the quality the service as such, and you bring a complete new technology together with an old technology uh, as such. At the same time, you see epification going on. Now, a nice word, uh, the introduction of uh, APIs, um, and that is becoming more traditional uh, as we speak. However, to facilitate that in a marketplace in, uh, where you can host uh, APIs and also create um, uh, APIs between, let's say, uh, the old and the new world, uh, that's becoming significantly more complicated. And because you also open your marketplace for potentially third-party APIs, which can be seen as a competition. In the wholesale environment, however, uh, slowly, Parties are getting it. The first API interconnects are already there. The first voice API interconnects are already there. And that is where you see that the small parties who are really focused on that kind of technology, they have, let's say, tailwind versus the big telcos. And that, that is seriously a challenge as we speak right now. And why is that a challenge? The traditional telco tries to protect um, their market. They try to protect their top line revenue and uh, the customer base as such. But the customers, they want to have, let's say, the new services installed immediately. Now, the big challenge for the telco is, am I going to develop that by myself? Or am I going to outsource that? Or am I going to partner with somebody? In this particular case, uh, if you look at cloud communications as such, yeah, everybody knows, okay, what is cloud? Eh? A unified communication system as a service, or is it communication platform as a service, and a lot of words are being used in that environment. But what does it actually mean for the telco and what does it mean for the uh, traditional end user? A good example, for, uh, for instance, is, is that uh, China Telecom, they decided we are going to use iBasis worldwide. And that was a big challenge for us as well. And why did China Telecom use that? Simply, Microsoft Teams is not allowed over the entire world. So we needed to provide them with a multiple um, uh, solution deck, uh, also covering Zoom, also covering WebEx, also co covering BlueJeans, including Microsoft Teams, so that they could offer, in fact, an, uh, a dashboard uh, to the enterprise community. Of course, we all know that the regulation is also not always helping us, and especially uh, the Biden administration had particular uh, regulation for China. However, we found ways uh, to work together with China Telecom Europe, China Telecom Global, uh, to make it happen. And currently we are in the process of launching uh, a lot of, let's say, Microsoft Teams solutions with direct uh, uh, routing facility. And we do that uh, collectively together with uh, one of our partners, Telegility, out of the US, who is really a small, no, a relatively small company, however, with a big solution drain uh, in the world of, um, let's say, Zoom applications, Microsoft Teams applications, and WebEx applications. We also work together with, uh, with Telestax, recently acquired by Mavenir, and, and simply that is where we use the CPaaS solution to, uh, to bring to the market uh, an SMS API or a voice API. Now, you would think that is an easy thing to do. Now, I can tell you the challenge is these two worlds, they talk different languages. A call flow diagram, as we use in the past in the traditional voice environment, let's say the new parties, they have no clue what they're talking about. Okay, the handshakes, 
and all the protocols which need to be uh, uh, arranged between the old and the new world. And that is where the challenges come across. So for the telco, the challenge is, okay, how can, I, how can we onboard this kind of new skills and new people and new expertise? And yeah, do we develop it by ourselves to satisfy the existing customer base? Or are we going to cooperate with a partner uh, to accelerate um, uh, that introduction into the market? Now, what we have seen the past year and a half, unfortunately due to COVID, and we all hope that it will not last very long, but uh, that, let's say, the creativity uh, and the technology boost that gave to all these small parties was significant. And it was amazing to see how everybody is adopting uh, to that new world and creating new opportunities, new market segments, but also uh, new business. Exactly. So, yeah. No. So sorry to interrupt you, Edwin, but but you were mentioning um, a couple of times the, the new technology. So so how can new technologies help the organization to implement new business models and services? I mean, you already tipped a little bit of the iceberg, but what are we talking about? And and can you share maybe some examples um, um, which you see around you? No, yeah. To be honest, Eric, if you if you see. And, and, and I'm not going to advocate what we as iBasis can do, but uh, generically, uh, we are independent. And let's say independent means that we are not competing with the telcos. Eh? That means that we enable them to go to the enterprise market or the, the, the small, medium enterprise market to offer the services. They need to accelerate. They know exactly the quality of service. They know all the numbers. They know the PBX. They know all the details of the customers. Those customers, they do not want to change. They want to keep the existing relationship with the traditional telco, but they want to have the new advanced services. And that is where, let's say, the telcos should accelerate as we speak. Now, I hope that my colleague from Telefonica can, um, um, can support that statement uh, from his perspective, how Telefonica is doing that. Um, at this moment, we see that everybody is struggling Okay, are we going to do it by ourselves or are we going to partner? And, 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 and that is at this moment, uh, let's say, the hot topic uh, as we speak. Many other telcos are also looking at ways, okay, we have prioritization on 5G in Europe. We have prioritization of bringing fiber to the home. And do we have also time, knowledge and money to spend on cloud communication services going forward, which is a specific area for many telcos. And that is, let's say, I'm not going to, to ask the telcos, okay, partner, they need to take that decision by themselves. But we see the struggle as we speak. And let's say the example I just gave with China Telecom is a good example that China Telecom said, uh, iBasis, we outsource all these opportunities to you. Uh, we do the testing. Uh, you have the numbers. You connect the old and the new world together. You provide us with the quality and you provide us with the fixed price model. And the same what we did is when we launched uh, the CPaaS platform uh, provided by Telestex uh, to M-Target in France, a relatively small uh, boutique carrier, but let's say the knowledge we built up uh, to connect old and new service together, yeah, that was amazing. And, and these are the new technologies uh, which will generate new business, new revenue, but will fundamentally change the concept of a traditional telco. And, and also the wholesale market on itself. Okay, thank you. I mean, you just challenged uh, a little bit uh, Telefonica. So, so let's see what, uh, what Telefonica has to, 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 to say here. Yeah. And uh, I'm curious to, uh, to hear what uh, <laughs> they will answer. Can imagine. So let's see what Jose has to, to tell us. So Jose, um, over to you. So, from your point, yeah, of view. I, I agree. I agree with uh, Edwin in the in the approach and the analysis. I think this uh, developing their own your own skills are very important. Uh, I, I won't comment for the whole Telefonica group. I'm not uh, prepared or or the, the the right person. You know, it's a, it's a big organization. But in the in the TGS uh, environment, we are doing. I have to say uh, both. In th there are actually areas of. Uh, application and product incorporation into our portfolio that we need to cooperate. But there are others that we really strongly feel that we need to develop ourselves. 
We need to own the product, incorporate the developing and skills internally, and uh, do it our own. So we, we try to do it ourselves. There is a, a big chunk of, of uh, value, very specific areas in which we try to do it ourselves. And that, that's the whole uh, scheme of, of, my, of my idea that our experience is not everywhere, not for all the services, but in the specific CPAS, for example, that I would mention, there are some layers, some interaction with, with uh, Microsoft, with Teams that we do all by ourselves. And that's a big, big uh, relevant uh, approach. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, um, uh, Serve, um, over to you. Um, what are the new uh, opportunities and challenges in the digital area for the market players? And what, what, what do you see around you? What, what are your big ticket items you see? Well, I, I think there are a couple of things here. Well, first of all, if you look at APIs and putting things together, because APIs, application interface, that's all it is, you are looking at true applications, like Edwin has been pointing out, bringing the old and the new world together. And there is also the thing where we see some elements happening is more on the processing part. So uh, really uh, making sure that the digital transformation leads to more efficiency and more effectiveness. And the other thing what I see is the digital transformation will lead to new services. So if you look at the big ticket items that we currently experience, it's twofold. First of all, we see mainly where we are interacting with a lot of different parties. Uh, in the quoting phase, we are collecting a lot of information. The funny thing is that even though we are going to all kinds of API standards, uh, there is still room for uh, some clearinghouse functionality in the middle because the uh, Ethernet connection that I have may have a completely different surface spec than the Ethernet connection that another person has. So what you see in the intermediate, so if you look at commercial elements also, you need to have a party in the middle that matches product A with product B, what you're searching for. So that's, that's one, one clear element in, in that sense. The other opportunities that we see is that indeed, uh, on an operational level, we create more APIs for our customers, which sometimes helps us to also to come over local legislation. So for example, one of the major things that we are doing is we are a fully licensed operator in China. And the other thing what we do there is to make sure that some of our carrier customers want to do sd one They don't have the correct license. So what we do, we create a full sd one environment, but we connect it towards their orchestrator based on an API. So that's the most extreme uh, value if you look at changes, operations, trouble ticks, and everything else, also already on an application level. So that's the most extreme element. We also believe that that could also be applied for, uh, in that sense, for uh, other network elements, which is more traditional, like internet underlying, to get all kinds of information out of that, which you can also share back to, to, to your partners. So that's a little bit how I look at it. So we see uh, on our element, we look at the fact that we have just an optimization of procedures, which helps everybody. And the second thing is creating new services like we have done with sd one in China, not only to connect uh, technologies, but also to overcome local situations in that sense. Okay, thank you. Michael, um, what's your take on, on, the, on the opportunities you see and then the challenges we, which are out there? I think um, what, the overarching requirement is, is it's driven by the demand for the, for the real-time flexible services. You know, we've got a broad range of services which are provided through the wholesale and retail uh, providers. Um, and then you've got the sort of introduction of the new technologies which will enable the services to transform. I mean, you know, we have technologies such as SD-WAN and SASE, which, which are looking at transforming how we do networking, uh, you know, decoupling that kind of overlay and underlay network. And, you know, that requires a certain cooperation between the wholesale providers in order to provide that global connectivity so the wholesale providers have an immediate opportunity, obviously, uh, to provide the underlay uh, network that will give the reach, the global reach uh, for, for their partners and customer, ultimately the upstream customers. That can be sort of Ethernet, and it can be um, in internet access type uh, underlay services, and then 
ultimately uh, you know providing that as I say to the to the end customers. But to make all this happen, I think you have to go back to the points that Jose were was mentioning that internally um, you need to be really agile. You need to be data driven because you know you got to make that seamless experience for that end customer. Um, and in order to do that, you need to coordinate across APIs. And you know, I'm I'm the LSO co-chair for the in, in the MEF for the LSO APIs. So I'm very big proponent of of standardization and automation there. Um, and in order to, you know, it's not just sufficient to expose APIs of what you have as a, as a wholesale provider. If you've got 200 partners, you've got to be able to plug and play with your other partners. So you've got to have a, a new kind of thought process about how am I going to make it easy to plug and play with all of these partners on a continuous basis as I evolve my uh, my processes and supports there, you know. So, and I think this then expands into a whole range of technology. So I talked about SD-WAN and, and SASE, you know, you've got 5G, 5G wireless access. Uh, you've got satellite now, which is huge uh, opportunity, you know, to partner, but also a big competitive threat potentially. You know, we, we've, uh, we don't know if, if, five, if, if satellite will be a whole set, you know, will be a wholesale play or actually they go straight to the consumer, this, you know, and even now you see satellite mixing with 5G and, you know, the, it, it may be that, you know, traditional providers find themselves uh, being taken over with 5G. So I think there's a lot of things going on there. I think there's this type of disruption means there'll be winners and losers. Definitely going back to what Jose was talking about is if you're not agile, you're not data driven, you don't really have a chance uh, to play in this new space as we go forward. But that's my kind of take on it. Absolutely agree, and th thank you, Michael. Now, um, uh, Jose, mentioning new technologies, how can new technologies help the organization to implement new business models and 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 and, and new services? So, can you share maybe some some examples? What are we talking about? I think it's in the in the possibilities, as as um, our our colleagues have commented before, the, um, the make, making things uh, faster and becoming part of the digital supply chain for services and connecting with uh, other providers in a faster and more efficient way, you can enable uh, end delivery of services that you might not be able to, uh, that are not financially possible today. So if you smooth, for example, the, the relationship with other providers in providing local circuits, because you have a quick uh, quoting process and purchasing process, you can deliver things that you cannot deliver today. And in that sense, these are the, the kind of technologies that enable new business relationships. Okay, it's, think... it's reducing ten, ten, tenfold the time it takes to close deals and do things. That, that's enabler by itself. Mm -hmm. So the target time to market, this is really, uh, let's say, decreasing. That's what you're saying, actually. Yeah, it's the, it's the time to market <laughs> and the customer experience. If you can mm -hmm. offer the customer the time to market to, to product that they need because you can what you cannot do by yourself and you need others to do you have a very smooth and, and efficient way to provide it this can enlarge the industry as as a whole mm -hmm. okay so question from the audience and th thank you fatima um uh, maybe for you um uh, Serbe. What are the requirements to, to gain access to the to the new uh, to the new business models? Well, what what can you can you help her? Well, I I think one of the critical elements that if you want to play in this game, you really need to be very smart to think about your complete data structure. Your data management is going to be key, and you need to structure it in such a way that you can really use it. You can use it first of all to uh, connect via APIs with other parties. Because that will be the first thing, you know, an API will describe, I sent you field A, field B, and the other party needs to understand field A and field B. So, and the other critical element, if you look at data management, because if you are going to make a single chain to your complete organization, you need to be very smart and thinking about where is my master data? So where, if you have a customer name, you filled in in the beginning, and that's the only spot you will fill it in. It needs to propagate to complete your complete line because that will make sure that you efficiently can get all the data towards everybody available at the same time. And it's also going to be accurate data. So you need to be um, thinking very smart. And 
the funny thing or the complex thing will be to have your legacy systems to have that all mixed together with this new process. Very simple. If you would have, and I'm running in it, well, I run into this today. I have a customer name field. And first of all, I'm working also with a lot of different languages. So we have four customer name fields, Chinese traditional, uh, Russian, English, and we have another Chinese version. So, and you need to make sure that they all fit through the complete process. So if one somewhere in the chain, the customer name is only 30 characters, you need to be aware of that. So it's also that thing that looking at the complete change and making sure that um, in each of these elements, you understand exactly how this information can be propagated. Because what typically happens is people just, oh, I cannot fully fill it in, so they truncate it. Then later on, you will, if you do automatic AIs or whatever, you think you have two customers, but you have only one. So to come back to the uh, statement of the question, you need to make sure that you think about the end-to-end -end process. You need to think very thoroughly about your data model. And thirdly, you need to make sure that there is a single spot in your chain, which is the master data for a specific objective that you're working on. I think that's critical to be successful. Otherwise, all those nice APIs, AIs, automatic things will fail. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a point of view. Thank you so much, uh, Sarah. Um, Michael, um, looking at business models and the revenue business model, what are the new revenue business models and services we see at a global scale involving um, uh, as a result of the increasing IoT connections reaching billions of, um, of, of connections in the in uh, or by 2025 um maybe you have a, have a use case already up front on the on the iot yeah. front actually i i wouldn't be the best person eric i would say maybe somebody else on the panel would be for that one because uh, you know i know that there's well i know all i can say is i know that there is a proliferation of of devices out there you know we we traditionally we came to this uh, at, you know from managing personal communications to managing devices and that just you know that just explodes the, the, the amount of devices that we have uh, have to manage and um, I think the price points of this uh, is a big issue is a big challenge in many cases but I think uh, maybe I'll hand that one over to jo Jose if you don't mind and, and Thanks, no. absolutely Jose well in the in the IoT space that you mentioned as in the only case uh, I can comment uh, that my colleagues Put as a special thing is the, um, the prepaid services as an enabler for some of the cases. Um, for example, that the latest uh, thing we have in, in, in Spain is this uh, digital uh, emergency cone that you can put on top of a car and it signals uh, to the emergency uh, teams that the car is an accident, is, is there stopped, and it can interact and broadcast um, a beacon around. And this is um, a, a big thing, it requires a proper prepaid uh, system. So in, in this sense, mm -hmm. the, the point of the prepaid, uh, the good price, of course, and, and some solutions like this that can, uh, can be massively um, deployed is, uh, is a big win. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, Sarah, quick question again from, 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 from the audience. Maybe you can, you, you can take this one. Have telecom, uh, telecommunications considered to do data mining to obtain insights uh, from customers and consider this uh, to be commercialized as a, as a product or as a service. Absolutely. Uh, what we are doing in, you need to understand that if you want to give valuable information for a customer, you need to have a lot of data. The more you have and you have enough processing power, that will make it useful. So I will make a short step towards our enterprise business and then I will circle back to our wholesale business. But in the enterprise business, what we currently are doing in, uh, with our China operation is that we use SD-WAN information and translate that into predictable model in digital twins. So we have a project, a uh, general, uh, well, more than a project, it's more a vision, ICT mind, uh, where we are looking at using AI, bi uh, big data to help our customers. So what do we do with SD-WAN? So SD-WAN, as everybody knows, makes a routing decision on the per application flow. So that data is somewhere in the SD-WAN orchestrator. What we do, we collect all that information, running it over 5G, internet, MPLS, private, ethernet, point to point, 
collect all that information, combine it with business information, and make a predictable model for our customers to say, watch out, we see this happening right now. It's an anomaly. That's the first thing that we do. But the second thing what we also do, we predict with 70% certainty that you will have an issue inside A in three months' time if you don't act on that. So that's a little bit what we are doing on, uh, on that side. Um, we are not quite sure how that will work later on in the wholesale market because it's a core quality and model that we will build up, which will help us to predict towards our enterprise customers. What you will see happening, which more underlaying is the sharing of information. So, and maybe we will resell the model, but there, if you look at the carrier business, we are looking more about give us all kinds of information you see in your network. So things like not only a site up down, but more interesting, what's my packet loss happening? What's happening with my jitter, my latency and everything else? Absorb that information and do AI machine learning on that one, which helps to predict to take certain actions, upgrades, uh, pre-calls about things that may go wrong and everything else. Use that. But the core information in that sense, and that's something I think the industry is still working on, to have some form of insight how we can share it with each other with with wholesalers. Because it's also happening right now that, of course, the market is moving from public to, uh, from private to public more. So in the past, it was a little bit more easier to exchange that kind of information, but if it becomes public, it, it also can go flow anywhere. So bottom line, we believe that um, uh, you need to check out where you can get a lot of data, which can help you in an operational level and which can help your customer to make decisions. So we do that in the enterprise business via ICT Mind, by using SD-WAN information. And uh, we are looking how we can use this in the carrier business to get more raw network information also via our partners. Okay. Yeah. Jose? There was, Eric, another uh, example for this uh, Schwan case. There is, of course, a very tricky line between privacy and personal data, especially in the, in the European population, in various country to country. But um, we have had a very good experience under the, the, the name of smartest steps of starting aggregating mobile data for citywide and city councils uh, movement of, of uh, people for the governments in uh, what is the, the roads and what time for traffic movements, for example, that was a very uh, developed product in, in, in that sense. So this perfectly anonymized data uh, it's only average and it gives uh, a big help for, for governments, agencies, for example, in, in the Smart Steps uh, line of products. Okay, thank you. Um, Michael, um, we all know you're, you're next to being the, 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 the CSO, you're also the co-founder of Amartis. And um, uh, so, so let's talk a little bit about, let's say, investments and some money. Um, First of all, and that's maybe question A, and then I come to the B. So how can companies support the digital uh, uh, transformation and transition actually through new investments in new technologies to meet the demand and, and offer connectivity services? And what are actually investors looking for in any business plan for maybe the, the people out there who would like to have a startup um, uh, on an existing business trying to transform themselves? So actually... Two questions for you. Floor is yours. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I, I, I think fundamental to to any business plan would be that you're going to exploit the uh, technologies that are around you to in order to uh, you know break the mold of of, of, a, of a traditional business uh, approach. So, so for example, you know, uh, taking advantage of the disruption that's taking place in the industry and saying, actually, we can offer a solution that, that maybe doesn't really regard the legacy, uh, you know, and, and, and tries to go forward and, and, and say, we're going to think more like the big cloud providers who, who essentially do more over-the-top type services, uh, you know, view, view of the world. And we've seen many, many, many cases of that. They look for something that can not get, what we call, bogged down in the, in the legacy, you know, in, in trying to sort of just to have an incremental improvement in what's there, but actually try to find a brand new way of, of, of providing a service without all of the, the baggage that, uh, that historically was associated with that service. And in order to do that, then you need to be data-driven. Uh, you need to be agile because I think, 
you know, you can start a journey uh, with a particular concept in mind, but through the business, through my own experience, you you know, that will evolve several times. You'll pivot a number of times. So agility is required when you want to pivot into, you know, how the market, the market will determine, you know, whether your product is, is going to stick. And, you know, it, if you can be agile enough, you can actually adapt to that market if you're kind of stuck in a certain way of operating or, or developing something. I mean, as a small company or as a startup entity, that is your that is your really key advantage is being small, being startup and not having that baggage. So you should really optimize around that. Yeah. I think that's what any investor will look like and look for in any business plan is to know that you're, you know, you're going to be able to adapt quickly and, and, and uh, really keep persistently going after the opportunity, you know? As long as the, 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 the let's say the life, uh, life cycle of, of your business plan on this side and getting, let's say the investment is, is, is not too Yeah, they have to match, them. of course. Yeah, they have to match, yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's mm -hmm. different ways of funding businesses. You can fund them directly through venture capital or you can bootstrap, you can do lots of different ways. And not always, you know, always will fit the, will fit the model. Like if you're in a telco industry and you want to target telco industry, it's, 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 it's not a great model for, for trying to boot, trying to get VC money. It, it, it's very difficult. It's, it's not so, it, it's not so funky, right? I mean, no. they, they, they don't look at it as, as, let's say a funky business, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to choose different models for this, you know, and um, where, where you can, uh, I say, live to see the next, the other day, you know, that's what I would say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, and and uh, I think it's very valuable to, to 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 quickly look, let's say, on the on the on the on the investment side of it, because by the end of the day, I mean, digital transformation it's a big change, and uh, and 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 being there, and on top of it, competing with with, with everybody else around you is it telcos, is is it the carriers, is it the is the operators, is the, is the aggregators, if, if it is whatever you out there, uh, even on data centers and submarine. Um, it is quite difficult, and 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 your 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 business model should really be, I mean, top notch, and and ahead of the game, uh, and uh, to, um, to 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 make sure that those investments are are are, are there. Um, yeah, I think one of the most difficult ones, Eric, is co-opetition in this space. Yeah. You know, sort of now you have huge blurring between where where you're. You know, we we're traditionally maybe had a, a better line delineation between your competitor and yourself, and Mm -hmm. Now you now you have you know even vendors becoming service providers uh, you know you have service providers uh, competing with each other in the same space you know that they traditionally would have had some separations like you know and I think I mentioned earlier satellite for example yes I think uh, you know we, we probably all need satellite but we don't want them to take the business of the traditional operator I'm sure you know that's what the traditional operator doesn't want you know so and 5G and everything becomes a little bit blurred. So you have to really navigate a very careful path through through those kind of uh, partnerships and relationships. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Silvia, so just just not so much on the on let's say on 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 the finance and investment side, but but more on the strategy side. But what, what, what do you think is the right path? Agility yeah. in all levels. I think that's critical, yeah. and you need to design your organization in, in such a way that you can fulfill that. That means that if you are looking at your complete uh, process, your end-to-end -end process, you need to create clear modularity and interface between each different step. Because elements like DevOps and Scrum will only work if you have that really contained. And within that, you let the process optimize everything themselves. You make sure the interface stay as they are and you have fully independent developments in that sense. The other thing, if you look from, um, from also still from the financial part, one thing that people will look into, it's good to have data, but how do you change that in information that you can ask money for or help you to get money from? I think that, that are critical elements which people will look like if they're going to do investment. Everybody understands the power of data, but how do you make it really happen and what's your model to make money? monetize that data. I think that are two critical elements which, which I would like to add. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, now, guys, um, we, 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 we're sort of heading a, a bit to the end and and, and, and uh, it, so far it has been enormous 
interesting for what you had to say from from all your uh, from all your senior expertise. So looking a little bit to the to 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 the future, and um, um, uh, Michael, if I may may start with you. Um, Scoping a bit the, the the future or the near future, even I know you don't have the glass ball, the crystal ball. Not nobody has it. But uh, from your experience, what is the outlook for the future consumption trends of, of uh, bandwidth hungry uh, uh, um, uh, consumers? What what what, what can, we, can we expect? I, I just think it's going to continue. We, we've had this acceleration during COVID, where you know now everybody realizes the you know, the, they can't live without this, uh, with this connectivity, without the services that they need to communicate. And, you know, it, it's just, it's just going to get stronger, that demand as, as, as we go forward. And, you know, this has created a whole lot of innovation as well, in terms of the services, in terms of what people can do. I think innovation that we, we could never have imagined, uh, you know, before this uh, pandemic. And, and now that we're in that new world, uh, people will want to improve the quality the reach, the, you know, uh, the availability of these services. Um, you know, I talked about satellite 5G, you know, uh, fixed, all, all kind of working together to give this, the service anywhere of any t- type and of any flexibility. I think, you know, you've, you see these um, new initiatives where they're moving forward with things like, you know, the virtual worlds and virtual reality and meta and, and things like that, you know, with their, this, this is only going to increase the requirement for those services to be seamlessly delivered anywhere, you know, through any, any device. I, I, I think it'll just keep marching on, you know. Okay. Thank, thank you, Michael. Sere, what's your take on the future? My take on the future is that um, we will see more um, because you talk about consumers. But I think there will be a lot of devices uh, which will uh, create a lot of bandwidth. And it will also create a different form of bandwidth. So if you look at data collection at devices at the edge, that's different than people are currently acting. But having said that, nowadays, uh, also people will, uh, will act differently. So you will see AR, uh, AI, more video conferencing, metaverse kind of things. So you also will see that the traffic flow will be more symmetrical. And finally, I also think due to edge computing and the whole IoT uh, trend that we see, we will see also a, a total any to any kind of data communication pattern. You know, still, you now still have a lot of cloud things happening, but there is so much push also towards the edge and with edge computing or for computing, however you want to call it, where you will see even from a computing point of view, things will be done more locally. So the whole bandwidth, I think, will going to explode as we already have seen but it will be more symmetrical and it will be more any-to-any in that sense. Plus, finally, there will be a lot of more unpredictable traffic flows in that sense. Um, For example, we see now also with lockdowns, but if, for example, field engineers, the service which you already have, go somewhere to a location and are using AR to fix a local problem, then a very significant video stream from that location goes back. So that's a little bit what, what we see happening, in my view. Okay, thank you, Sarah. And last but not least, uh, some famous last words, um, uh, uh, Jose, your crystal ball. Well, yeah, uh, I think Sarah has a very good point in the devices and individual. And what we see also a lot of bandwidth in, in the driving our, our pipes is um, useless bandwidth. It's uh, traffic generated by machines, automated processes, that are really not profitable or not money makers, and they are occupying more and more space. So the signal to noise ratio, it's a, it's a worrying factor. I mean, individuals will be driven by the content they consume. There will be eventually medical personal telemetry, in which we will be streaming our, our health data and so on. But this will be depending on the what the individual can consume. Businesses will be driven by these um, abilities to consume data as well. But then automated processes and devices, uh, generating traffic, scanning networks, and doing security-related uh, activity that's um, useless traffic that is uh, also very important in the future. And that, that requires a complete new uh, discussion on panel on security and how to control what comes into the networks and how to filter and prevent these things to happen. 
Okay, thank you, uh, thank you, Jose, for those uh, the, the, those last words. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, it seems that we are heading towards the uh, the end of uh, of this session. So, uh, thank you for the keynote speaker and sponsor, Telefonica Global Solutions, uh, uh, for the participation and giving an uh, an, uh, an interesting uh, presentation. Jose, thank you very much for uh, for, for for that. Um, and also, I would like to uh, thank all the panelists. So, Michael, Serve, and even somewhere in the in the in the clouds <laughs> and in the air, Edwin from uh, from my basis. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for for for, for sharing your thoughts, th sharing your your expertise with uh, with uh, with the audience here at the webinar live uh, care community platform. So, um, uh, for me, I'm gonna say ciao for now. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned because we we will be back to you even this year still. So um, um, uh, for now, I'll give uh, the mic back to uh, to the studio in Berlin. And uh, thank you very much. Stay tuned and uh, uh, thank stay you, safe. Eric. Thanks. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Eric. They are all. We are at the end of this webinar session, and I would like to thank our today's keynote speaker, Jose, for his interesting presentation, our panelists for sharing the knowledge, and our audience for participating and listening. This panel will be soon available to watch on CC Media Portal. We are looking forward to welcoming you in both virtual and physical events next year. For more information, please visit our events portal. If you're interested in supporting and sponsoring one of our future branded webinars, contact CC Team. For all updates and fresh content, follow us on our four social media channels. Also subscribe to our Telegram news channel to receive exclusive invitations to CC webinar live sessions. That's all for today. Stay safe and healthy and goodbye. Thank you.